Steve Burton, Director of Stranding and Population Assessment. Hello. How you doing, Steve? Hey, good morning, Bob. How are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, it's been a while since we talked, so I thought it'd be uh, uh, nice to just kind of get back together and, and catch up a bit. Yeah, it has been. We, we seem to talk every uh, three months or so, so I appreciate you Let me come on the radio show and tell the public about dolphins and whales and Indian River, St. Lucie, and Martin County. So thank you. <laughs> wow. So what, what has been going on since we talked last? Um, since we last talked, um, I mentioned that we had a couple of uh, dead dolphins wash up, but they were um, heavily decomposed, so we weren't really able to find a cause of death from them. Uh, but since then, um, we had a dolphin that's known in our photo ID catalog. Her name was Curl, um, and she passed away, I believe, in May. Um, and we were able to recover, you know, the public called it in, said saw the dead dolphin. We were able to uh, recover her carcass and take it back to Harbor Branch. And uh, we always try to perform a necropsy, a full necropsy if we can. And for those that don't know what a necropsy is, that's the uh, human version of an autopsy, but it's done on an animal. And uh, lo and behold, even though she looked great on the outside, she's in her late 30s, uh, mid-30s animal age. Uh, she actually died from a stingray barb inside her fore stomach. Oh, um, geez. So the animal actually had eaten a stingray, and the barb perforated this first uh, stomach chamber, and she died from septic. So, again, sometimes when you find these animals and they're dead and they look fine on the outside, you really have to – no pun intended, dig through the inside of them to find out what that cause of death was. So interesting. Um, there's been other cases around the country uh, with other dolphins uh, dying from stingray barbs, too. So it's a fluke incident, but unfortunate one for this animal. So so you said she was in there probably mid-30s. Is that is what is the, the how, how old can a dolphin get? Um, in the river, anywhere 30, 40 uh, up to 50 years old, somewhere in there, around there. Uh, we've got some animals in their 30s. Uh, I've had multiple kids, um, and their kids and offspring have had multiple kids as well. So um, that's the neat thing about having a photo ID uh, team that works as strandings as well. We're able to identify animals, um, record their home ranges, and basically follow their age from cradle to the grave. I hate to say it that way, but uh, interesting, and find out who their mom is and you know, all that good stuff. Yeah, let, let's uh, talk a little bit about that uh, for people who may not be aware of, of what you do and, and the way you catalog uh, a different uh, dolphin. And uh, you've been doing this for a while, so you've got quite a uh, photo, uh, photo, whatever I'm looking for. Uh, you got a photo lot of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of pictures. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we, we, we survey the Indian River Lagoon from Sebastian Inlet to Jupiter Inlet including the St. Lucie River. Uh, we take photos. Um, it takes five survey days for us to complete the river in one month, and then we repeat it the next month and the next month and next month. My team is actually finishing the month of June today. Uh, they are running from Stewart Causeway back to Harbor Branch, and that will finish the river for us. Um, and we collect photos. We have a permit through National Marine Fisheries to uh, approach the dolphins, take their photos. Um, from We identify them by their dorsal fins. And then we analyze it in a computer database and uh, keep track of who's who in the river. So we know over 400 dolphins in our home home area, which I mentioned. And um, and then we can uh, find out who their offspring is, too, when we see a mom in calf. And then when that calf dispersed from its mom, we can uh, follow up with that kid and see how that kid grows up. <laughs> and that fin is like uh, our fingerprint, right? Correct. It sure is. So they each have different niches and notches on it, and that's how we tell them apart. What is the uh, overall health of the dolphins that you're seeing? Overall health currently is a stable population. Um, we're not seeing an increase of deaths or um, and just the normal reproductive rate it seems to be as well. So that's that's good out there. So the dolphins are doing good. Yeah, that's that's good to hear. Yeah, we also we also had a little calf. Um, the mother's name is Nathan. The dolphins don't know their names. My crew names them so that they're in the catalog as an individual animal. We had a little calf um, 
to cut uh, some fishing line wrapped around it. This mall Nathan likes to be over by Riverside uh, Marina, uh, Fort Pierce Marina. I'm, I'm sorry, Vero Beach Marina, Memorial Park area. We see them a lot up there. So we were tracking that little animal for a couple of days, documenting it. And again, it's free swimming. So per our rules with National Marine Fisheries, we document it. Um, and it looked like a brand new fishing line wrap around the front of the animal. And lo and behold, six days later, the animal had backed out of it and was gear free. So we didn't have to rescue it. So that's why we do a lot of documentations first before any rescue plan goes in. Um, and that, again, is a free swing dolphin. Obviously, if the animal was anchored in spot, you know, unfortunately trapped by, maybe by a crab pot stuck there, then we would still get permission from National Marine Fisheries to uh, cut it free at that case. But when they're free swimming, we photo document them um, because sometimes the animals can shed the gear on their own. So that's a good story, uh, Nathan's kid. We've seen it a lot in the last month since we first documented it. It's no more gear. So it must have just been a loop of discarded line. And um, with the little dolphin playing with other little dolphins, it got free. <laughs> do, you, do you find that a lot uh, happening a lot with the, the fishing line? Um, it's uh, maybe one or two cases a year in our area, if that weren't one case a year. And that's just the ones that are reported or if we find them during our photo ID surveys. So in Nathan's kid's case, our photo ID team uh, found the entanglement. Um, so um, the public didn't call that one in. And if the public does see a dolphin entangled or a manatee entangled, uh, the number to call immediately is 888-404-3922. Um, and that way you can get to an operator right away for FWC, uh, tell your location, what you're seeing, um, and they can uh, call the rescue group in that area. And this is for the state of Florida to get somebody to that animal to take a look at what's going on. All right. So, Steve, thanks for being on the show. We want to remind folks that uh, you do have a, a speakers bureau set up. So if uh, any organization would like uh, you to come talk to them, you'll go talk to them. Yes, please do. We are already taking uh, reservations for the fall and winter for the snowbird season. So please go online, FAU Harbor Branch for the Speakers Bureau. And also, if you have a specialty license plate, protect uh, Florida whales or uh, protect wild dolphins plate, thank you very much. Uh, we get grant funding from those plates to do the work that we do in the river and help the dolphins and whales. Really appreciate it, everybody. All right. Well, Steve, thanks so much for being on the show. Looking forward to talking again down the road. Sounds good, Bob. Have a great summer, all right? You too.